to do a uh, video this week, uh, but then I looked up at the sky and I remembered just how much I love YouTube money. Well, it appears we're not dead yet, which is uh, good, but I guess that means I have to continue this end of the world programming while Rome burns. This is a bitsy episode today of Star Stuff because I've just been playing around, playing with my new toy. Here is the Large Magellanic Cloud. Uh, there's the observatory. Uh, note this tree, this pain in the ass tree that's been in the way of me and Karina. Karina's up here, Colsac Nebula here, um, but my aspect is straight through here right straight through this gap in the trees so everything above me up here is, is fine over to the south is fine so i'm taking shots uh here of the large magellanic cloud and you can see it even it looks like it's got this weird green comet through it now that green patch is the tarantula nebula uh, and and usually it comes out as green in the optical which is really weird but what we've got to remember is that this is a galaxy much like Andromeda in the northern hemisphere this is our weird derpy special looking galaxy it's totally disrupted it doesn't look like a classic galaxy um, but normally when you see those you know when you see those red jewels in galaxy photos where they've processed the hydrogen alpha so you can see the red uh, that's what this is this is actually a red patch it's just so far away uh, and it's so low on the horizon as well that it ends up looking sort of green which is weird and I've always found it weird to image uh, we certainly don't notice that coloration with any of the nebula closer to us nebula like this like Carina is in our Milky Way it's in our galaxy but this nebula here the tarantula nebula it's massive it's just a long long way away we are looking at a nebula in a different galaxy which really blows me away So this tree here has been interrupting my unfettered views of Karina which comes across the sky this way and uh, so of course it had to go. Uh, it was also being used as a food source for a fruit bat. Fruit bats have in the past shit all over my Raza so had to go. It was way up there and I had to pull this down without it smashing the dome or smashing the roof. Uh, and I used ropes and a chainsaw and somehow got it to land right there. The Lunatico Cloud Watcher is still doing its thing and it has been fantastic. Uh, I can actually see the quality of my images going up and down with the sky temperature so I can actually see by seeing in real time. We also had a little visitor to the observatory, a beautiful coastal carpet python. Uh, which judging by its size and the video I'm estimating around 2.2 meters at least which means it was actually the size of the observatory like all this wiring I've put up properly with hooks around the place so it's all nice and flush and just wiring in general actually there's still obviously heaps of cables but I've really got it down to the bare minimum uh, because I don't want any of this stuff to snag and I haven't really been very good with cable management in the past because I've been here anyway so now I've just tried to get the cables really long so that they don't snag on anything or out through to here and under and through so that there's no chance for them to get snagged at all. So no matter what camera you are using, uh, when you screw it on, make sure there's no give. Like if I wobble this at all, it's tight as in all parts of the train. 
and you want to do that so that you don't have tilt and that I mean that whether that's up the front like with the rasters or at the back um, just make sure everything's screwed in I've had it happen before where just a couple of screws on something is not right and if you have any give at all that'll show up as an unfocused side on your image well things are a bit different in the old Byron Bay Observatory uh, I mean I've always been in here sort of monitoring the equipment outside and I've had the dome for a couple of years now um, but now that I don't even have to go out to rotate or focus or anything it's um, really just me sitting in here babysitting remotely I'll show you there's the live feed coming straight off uh, this is a three minute exposure in color but it's not debated so you can't see it and you can't see anything really can you um, there's nothing there. So a couple of nights ago I had this dome that rotates itself so I thought what I'll do is I'll see if it can just do a massive mosaic for me which is something that if you've watched this channel before you know I was trying to pursue. Now there's some problems there because of my dome geometry there's bits where the, the dome was getting in the way. Uh, my guide scope was hitting the top of the dome and it didn't really work but what this did allow me to do was get this massive patch of sky. To give you an idea Orion is probably about that big like this is 20 times the size of Orion and this is part of the Vela supernova remnant. Uh, so a big shockwave traveling out into space from a progenitor down here somewhere that exploded quite a while ago. So unlike other nebula, which is like the birthplace of stars, this is the death of one. This is the cobwebs, the corpse of a star spraying out across space, which I really love. So I just looked around this nebula and I looked at all these fine features within it and I thought what would look good as a single frame and I narrowed in to this region here and I thought this looks kind of like a stingray and it's sort of bubbly and nice uh, so I've I spent all of last night just capturing data on that and I think it looks really good. Three minute exposure on the Rasa so you can see how faint this is I'm barely getting any detail at all but that's okay because all the detail is in my hydrogen alpha layer but I'm still really impressed at just the raw color that comes out of this camera. And a good test of a color camera is this differentiation between the red and the blue. And this is part of what attracted me to this region. I wanna show you guys something that you don't normally see. We, we're used to seeing all those classic targets, the Horsehead, Orion, Carina, but this is just a bit of space I just sort of picked because it looked cool. And I think there's some good stuff in here. These cobweb strands of red, and blue it uh, but for now I'm sort of just sitting here I think it's time for a beer there's really not much to do while I sit here and wait 12 seconds later that little foray into the first light images from the new Next Dome Observatory, aka my backyard. Uh, do think of us here during this coronavirus crisis. Uh, I'm just forced to stay at home and um, drink beer and use the observatory. The only time I get out is to go to the beach or waterfalls. It's really um, quite brutal. Uh, I, my kid and I are slowly going insane at home, um, so we have started a little YouTube channel for him. Uh, if you can Google his name and subscribe to him, he'd, uh, he loves watching that number go up. Are you guys okay? I hope you guys are okay out there. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for liking and tagging me in your images. I do love to see them. And thanks for uh, hitting the like button on mine as well. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.